Christmas and we're still previewing loads of big club games and we're even going to have uh, obviously the All Ireland Club hurling semi finals the weekend before Christmas and I suppose that's a good place to start. Uh, what do you think of the the soccer World Cup final being on that Sunday and the GA knowing well in advance that's on that Sunday? and them fixing two All-Ireland club hurling semi-finals, and particularly, to me, the biggest club hurling game in Manny's a year on the same time as the, as the soccer final. Yeah, it's it's a mad one, Mick, to be honest. Like, it, you know, everyone's looking forward to this hurling game so much. Uh, it's obviously a repeat of the classic All-Ireland final we had earlier in the year, which, you know, a lot of people say is last year, but, of course, it was it was back in February and all that Valentine's Day heartbreak uh, for Bally Hill. But, like, you know, it's you know, I, I think it's a daft move from the GA being honest. Uh, you know, the Harlan Pierce will be at Croke Park and they'll be tuning in watching the Harlan on TV or whatever. But you know, like the GA aren't trying to take on the World Cup here, but I think it was just something that could have been avoided. Um, you know, just I think the World Cup final kicks off at three o'clock and then the game of Croker kicks off at half three. So there's not really much leeway for enjoying both games comfortably. Um, I just think it was a wrong move. Like I remember, like Donegal playing an Ulster Championship game in 2002 when Ireland were in a last 16 game against Spain, and right. the game had gone to penalties by the by the time the game threw in, and, and I think that game was on a Clonus against Derry. And like I know a, ha- a handful of people who went to Clonus, and they said it was just so eerie. Like, and you know, there wasn't really much focus on what was happening in Clonus at the time. Of course, Donegal Shea Gibbon was in goals that day. And, you know, there's been other clashes here and there. I can remember in 2016, I think Kildare were playing Westmead at Croke Park when Ireland were playing France in the last 16 of the Euros. And I remember being in the media centre at Croker watching it, like, and the soccer was on and the big screens in Croke Park as well. So, but, like, there was nobody in the stadium bar the Seagulls as the, the teams were doing their warm-ups. Like, so it was a very, very strange day. You know, it was definitely something that could have been avoided and probably should have been avoided, in my own opinion, Mick. But, like, you know, we're in for a great hurling game either way. And what's going on out in Qatar won't impact that. But, you know, at this time of year, when people have been moaning about elite games taking place and, you know, the Inter County being finished in July and everything else, this is the most elite game we're going to have since the All Ireland finished. And the fact that it's clashing with such a major global event is. A real shame, in my opinion. I'm not, like I'm not saying that we need to bow to other codes, right? Like that. I just think it yeah. stands to reason. Yeah. Like you're you're a soccer fan. I'm not a big soccer fan at all, to be honest. But I would like to probably watch the final as well. I wouldn't, uh, but I'm not going to be able to now. And I, I probably won't remember in 20 years' time who won the 2022 uh, soccer World Cup because I won't have seen it because I'll definitely be watching Bally Hale and Bally Gunner and the people from those two parishes will be there at the game or watching the game. But I think it's the bigger picture. Uh, I know Richard Hogan says here, uh, Kilkenny v Offaly for Italia 90. I think uh, Ireland were playing Egypt at the time in one of the worst games in World Cup history. But it was only like uh, Offaly beat Kilkenny that day. And I think there was the guts of about, I think it was 9,000 in Crow Park for, you know, a brilliant Offaly performance. And one that's probably forgotten maybe as a result of that as well. So, like I don't, I don't know. I, I, I just think I, I don't think we need to bow to other sports or anything like that. And I know we're not in the World Cup, but I just think someone actually suggested to me that they could have played the games, the two semi-finals at the same time, even in in different venues, and put one of them live live on TG Catter and put one of them live on uh, the TG Catter YouTube or something or something like that. It just and it's a funny one as well because the All Ireland, uh, the All Ireland finals aren't until. Uh, mid to late January, so there's mm. almost like a rush with getting these all Ireland semi finals played before Christmas as well. So it just it strikes me as strange to be honest, and we're probably shooting ourselves in the foot when we have such a good, particularly that that Bally Gunner Bally Hale semi final. Like there's needle in that. Um, there's needle from last February. There's even needle from Colin Fenley's comments saying about how he kind of took Barry Coughlin's speech even personally. He said it just mm. said it maybe there was a bit of a lack of respect. So I think. I like I, I've been kind of saying it's not often there's club games will get the coverage of an inter county game or the build up of an inter county game, but I think this will and I just I just think we're shooting ourselves in the foot a small bit. Yeah, definitely. And you know, when it comes to the neutral as well, Mick, you know, like if there was if there was lads scotching around Dublin there and suddenly like, you know, they, they could have easily tipped into Crook Park for this game or, you know, even just tuned in for it on the T V. But I think, you know, a lot of the the middle ground, just general sports fans are going to be tuning into the World Cup final. That's that's just how I see it, and 